Now let's talk about molecular polarity. We've talked about dipoles and bonds. We've even drawn some dipoles. But now we need to talk about a whole molecule and whether it's polar or not. And uh, we're going to start with water. And this is, some would say, the entire point of chemistry, if you're a biologist, is to understand why water is polar. It's the high point of the class. Yes, you've made it. And the octet rule still rules, in case uh, you're playing along at home. So a polar molecule made out of polar bonds. Um, so let's draw water. And we just drew water. So let's draw it again. And I'll keep some space on this page because let's see how much we have to do here. So there is a water molecule. Mm. I want to draw it very evenly, so I'm going to draw it again. I think that's a little better. Okay, so there's a water molecule that's approximately uh, parallel to the page, even though the page is crooked there. There we go. And um, <clears throat> it is a polar molecule. It is made out of polar bonds. And polar bonds means we can draw a dipole for the bond. <clears throat> and in fact, uh, Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to draw the dipoles. The hydrogen is more uh, positive because it has a lower electronegativity. And, <coughs> excuse me, I now have two dipoles. And um, now I want to talk about molecular polarity and how we calculate it and how we figure it out. Now, dipoles are vectors and if you've taken a physics class, you know how to add vectors. And I'm actually going to do it just in case. It's a good review or as good preview of how, what to do with vectors. And what you do is you take the two, vec the two dipoles, the two vectors, and you draw them exactly as they are, except you put them head to tail. So add vectors. which are dipoles, um, put head to tail. And so I'm going to draw this first one, and it's going to go like that. And then I'm going to draw the second one, and we're going to put the plus part by uh, the arrow part here. That's what I mean by head to tail. And if I go like this, then the sum of the dipoles is in red, and the sum of the dipoles creates a dipole for the molecule. So the sum of the dipoles is what's called the molecular dipole, and it goes straight down. And you can kind of imagine this if you see here, if you take these dipoles and you break them up into a part that goes down and a part that goes for this one to the right. And you can see that if you take this one and you break it up into a part that goes down and a part that goes to the right, you can kind of see that the right and left portions of these cancel out, but the down portions do not. That's this, this plus this actually gives you this molecular dipole. And it's like you're breaking the dipoles down into their X and Y parts, which is tricky, I know. Thank you for bearing with me while I did that. We'll have some hints on how to do dipoles coming up. But one of the ways is to just look at them. And you can tell that these two dipoles do not cancel out. We will see dipoles that do cancel out shortly. So this is a molecular dipole, and any molecule that has a molecular dipole is polar. Any molecule that has a molecular dipole and it's sometimes called a net molecular dipole
is polar. Okay, and again, we will, so, so your conclusion here is that water has polar bonds and is a polar molecule because the dipoles do not cancel out. So please write that. Water is a polar molecule. It has polar bonds and the polar bonds do have a molecular dipole. Please write that down. Now, um, I think the next page, yes, um, is going to be an example of a nonpolar molecule made out of polar bonds. And let's do that process. So CF4, and it's even tetrahedral. So everything comes back to drawing the Lewis structure. If you were to draw the Lewis structure for this, you would see there are four plus four times seven, which adds up to 28 valence electrons. You would put the central carbon in the middle, or the least electronegative, and the first element in the formula in the middle, and then sprinkle your valence electrons around the outside edges. I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. So there is the Lewis structure. Now we do, and our process will always be like this, now we do shape. In order to do shape, we look at the central atom. We do note that there are four electron groups. That means it's tetrahedral. So four electron groups. Tetrahedral, 109.5 degrees bond angle. And there's only one way to draw it. And here we won't draw all the pairs of electrons and that's fine. So two positions flat in the page, one sticking out, that's the out wedge, one sticking back, that's the back wedge, like so. And we can even label this the perfect 109.5 and all of them are. Okay, so now it's time to draw dipoles. Dipoles are gonna go from the less to the more electronegative. And we don't have to make the dipoles wedged. But when I look at this, I see four dipoles. They're actually pulling in exactly opposite directions. And when you have all dipoles that are exactly the same, pulling in exactly opposite directions, they completely cancel. No net molecular dipole. This is a nonpolar molecule. And I know that's very hard to see with these arrows going in all directions. But let's talk about a slightly easier example to see. And that's going to be carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is also a nonpolar molecule made out of polar bonds. Its dipoles go in exactly opposite directions. So one to the left, one to the right. Those will exactly cancel out nonpolar molecule. Um, there is one, well, there's a series of nonpolar molecules uh, that go beyond, well, let's just say this. Yeah, well, let me show this. So this is uh, BF3, and BF3, so boron, does not have an octet, so that's weird. 
But if we do this, I'll draw it in its shape with its electrons. So BF3 is something we don't talk about normally, but I'm bringing it up. Uh, the reason we don't talk about it normally is because boron does not have an octet. However, for this, it's a perfect example. All three of these dipoles point in exactly opposite directions, nonpolar. And so we're coming up with a rule, and the rule says whenever the central atom is surrounded by all things that are exactly the same, it will be nonpolar. Let me write that out in green right here. When the central atom is surrounded by all things that are exactly the same, Dipoles cancel nonpolar molecule. Oh, that should be a colon, I guess. Dipoles cancel nonpolar molecule. Central atom, two things that are exactly the same. Dipoles cancel nonpolar molecule. Three things that are exactly the same, even though they're polar. Exactly cancel nonpolar. And uh, four things that are exactly the same. This is the toughest one to see. Also nonpolar. And, oop, I already did my CO2 there. Let's go on to the next page. There's my CO2. Nonpolar molecule made out of polar bonds. We already did that. Now let's come back to something like ammonia. And we have, we're going to do both of these examples because these are... So ammonia, we know, has its Lewis structure like this. So Lewis structure. And then we draw a shape. And we get nitrogen. With its three bonds. Maybe you can see it, I don't know, but all three of these are pointing down and out. And so the, uh, again, the left and right portions, it's hard to see. Well, let's say this. Hopefully you can look at this and start to see that the dipoles don't cancel. Um, dipoles, well, the best way to say it is the left and right portions do cancel, but if we draw the molecular dipole, it is straight down. So dipoles don't completely cancel out. This is a polar molecule. And that's important because I wanna make sure you know that our rule about the central atom having all things that are exactly the same, well, it has three things that are exactly the same and a pair of electrons. That's different, won't cancel. And another version of this sometimes says, if there's a pair of electrons on the central atom, it will be polar. Again, that's a good rule. However, there are a couple of exceptions. I'm not sure we'll see those exceptions in this course you will in the next course, but we're trying to get the basics down here. All right, so uh, let's go back to our rule for a second. When the central atom is surrounded by all things that are exactly the same, dipoles cancel nonpolar molecule. Okay, good. Well, and I, this is, I don't know if I'd call this a rule, right guiding principle right here, guiding principle, because it is true 95 plus percent of the time. Guiding principle, right or right there. But um, 
there is actually no substitute for drawing the dipoles and looking at them to see if they cancel. Like that's 100% correct. And again, we'll do plenty of these to feel more comfortable with them. Here's C2H6. If we draw its Lewis structure, we get this. This is going to be a little tricky because you'll note that this carbon is tetrahedral and this carbon is tetrahedral. Drawing two tetrahedrals, not easy. <laughs> uh, let me roll up my sleeves here and see if we can do this. Um, actually, well, let's do it. So this is going to look like here. Here I'm going to put, this is like the top one and this is the one to the side. So these are all flat in the page. That means that pointing slightly down and out are going to be my out wedge and my back wedge. Out wedge, back wedge, like so. I think I put my out wedge on the wrong side there, but that's okay. Anyway, I don't think you necessarily have to do it. You will see that on some of the mar molecules on your pharmaceutical, uh, or I have anyway, in my pharmaceuticals, my prescriptions. Um, and here's where we come up with another guiding principle. Guiding principle, so guiding principle. Anything made only of carbons and hydrogens is nonpolar. Anything made from only carbons and hydrogens is nonpolar. And it turns out that all three of these, so, so there is a difference in electronegativity, though it is small. And the, so, but it turns out that all three of these mini dipoles and all three of these mini dipoles each cancel each other. And that is tough to see as well. But this is a nonpolar molecule. So nonpolar, polar, and we've done a number of examples of this already.